Welcome back folks. We're glad you've taken a little bit of time out of your day to spend with us looking in over our shoulder on our project. If you're new here, my name is Rick and with my wife Lori, we're building a 31 and a half foot diesel trawler in our backyard. This, this video this week is all about fairing. Yeah, I know again, it seems to be all I've done for the last little while. I'm sorry, but it's just one of those jobs that has to be done. Uh, there were a couple of large defects on the cabin sides where the forward cabin here meets the, the main cabin that required a tremendous amount of fairing to uh, get them to blend in and look natural. And, uh, so that's what I was up to. Um, in this video there's with some new stuff. I used the 3M uh, dry guide coat to uh, go over the polyester filler because it's all white and you can't see anything. So uh, that helped a lot. So you'll see later on in this video, I switched to uh, System 3 Quick Fair, and this is an epoxy product that I really like, and uh, it's much nicer to work with and easier and all that other stuff. So there's going to be some obligatory sanding and spreading out yet more expensive poop. So without any uh, further fanfare, uh, let's get this party started. We're starting off here today and we've got a couple of major defects where the forward cabin and the main cabin sides meet. Uh, there was a bit of misalignment probably due to the changes that I made to the design and extending the hull and uh, resulted in three or four layers of tape having to go on and I really want to get this smoothed out so it looks like it was one continuous piece of uh, bulkhead down the side of the boat. I'm using 3M dry guide coat which is a graphite powder that uh, when applied to the surface and you sand it it allows you to see the highs and lows and then you can continue to go on and add more filler or sand more off and work your way down to smaller and smaller defects until it looks pretty good. I gradually got the defects down to a size where you can't see them, you can feel a few uh, edges sticking up and with a bit more sanding and a little bit of glazing compound it's totally gone, you'll never see it once this area is painted. I left this little segment in. It's really weird. I just had a sander in my hand and I went to do something else and I come back and I can't find it. I have no idea where it went. Well, I know now, now where it is, but at the time I was just perplexed. Where the hell did I put it? I imagine we've all been there at one time or another. So at this point I figure someone's screwing with me. Gremlins? My wife? Cats? Where the hell did it go? So at this point progress using the polyester base filler was rather slow. It built up in very thin layers and sometimes you'd have to do five, six, seven applications just to get it up to the level that you need, especially for large defects like this. So I mixed up my own homebrew recipe of filler and it's uh, epoxy, microspheres, and cabosil. And I've done this before on the hull and it actually worked pretty well. So I gave it a shot and uh, it allowed me to make a little bit more headway and progress with uh, fixing these defects. Here you can see the size of the defect and it's pretty large. There's three layers of uh, heavy fiberglass tape underneath which makes it harder to fare out and uh, even out but uh, through persistence and quite a few applications of uh, fairing compound it, uh, it's virtually invisible now.
I'm moving down the side decks now with the uh, homebrew fairing filler and uh, it's working r really well. Um, the side decks and the cabin sides are going to be what people see when they walk down the dock and they look at the boat and I really want it to not look like crap so that's why I put in all this extra effort into fairing it and sanding it and uh, as the professionals say the quality of a p eventual paint job is 99% preparation so it's uh, I think it's going to be worth all the effort. Gonna run through this segment a little uh, faster than normal. Um, watching someone spread epoxy filler on a boat is about as exciting as watching them sand it or watching paint dry. So, here we go. So we're working with something a little different today. This is a System 3 Quick Fair, and this is a, an epoxy product. And if you've watched any of my older videos where I was fairing the hull, this is what I used exclusively. So it's uh, pretty easy to work with, pretty forgiving. There's, it's two part. There's, uh, I guess what you call the body and the catalyst, or the cream hardener. And uh, it mixes at a ratio of by weight of 100 to 44 so we're set to grams and I'm going to do a half batch right now I've only got a couple of small spaces to do so we're going to do 50 and 22 so 50 of the brown 22 of the white You gotta be careful you don't mix your mix up your mixing step sticks or you'll end up with a bucket of hard useless plastic. So we need that 22, which will take us to 76. 64. Seventy. They say seventy-six. I'm sorry, math is hard. It should have been seventy-two. Seventy-four is close enough. Pretty easy to mix, you just keep stirring it until you get one homogeneous color. It's kind of a light sandy brown. Something I didn't show in this little segment was uh, folding the filler over itself uh, using the spreader, which really helps ensure that it's thoroughly mixed. See the consistency of it is kind of like peanut butter. It will drip, but it will take a while. So I'm gonna go get my spreader and uh, we'll get some of this on. 
the quick fare spreads just like butter and it is so nice to work with and you can see the color that sets when it cures and you don't really need to use a contrasting agent like the 3M dry coat to see any of the uh, low spots. I apologize for the noise in the background if you can hear it it's uh, my large exhaust fan in the back of the shed uh, trying to keep me cool so now that it's cured we're going to have a quick look at uh, the sanding of the expensive goop we just piled on the side of the boat and I normally like to start with the RO sander and knock down the hard edges and the surface. It just makes the hand sanding a lot easier. I really like the DuraBlock sanders for this size of work. It's, uh, they're easy to handle, they work really well. And I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper on this one and it makes short work of uh, fairing out these large defects. Feeling the surface is really important because your hands will tell you what your eyes can't see. This is the starboard side of the main cabin and the defect on this side wasn't as bad as the port side but it still took two or three applications and sanding sessions to uh, get it in, into a nice shape that uh, won't be visible at all once it's finished. The broad blade of the drywaller's putty knife thingy here is uh, really the last step before you let it cure. This is my last pass of fairing down the uh, starboard side side deck and uh, this should be pretty much the last of it. Another milestone. The weather certainly has changed quickly around here. This morning it was only 5 degrees Celsius. That's about 40 Fahrenheit in the morning and it was too cold to do epoxy work. So I've started to add battens around the foredeck will support the cap rail and uh, I'll likely install the windlass permanently. I've had to order some gasket material for the windlass but it should be here this week. YouTube appears to have changed their algorithm again. Whatever it's doing now has dropped our viewership by about 80%. I'll have to figure out what I'm doing wrong, but if you can subscribe, like, comment, 
and share it with our videos. We certainly, certainly would appreciate it. So from Laurie and I, until next time, be well and happy. Cheers.